So I want to tell you, this, this utility that I wrote is for me one of the most exciting things I've written in a while. When I built it, I honestly did not anticipate how useful this would be, both for me as a developer and for like Hector as, as a business analyst or, or you know whatever role he's playing of the day. The things he's been able to accomplish with the thing that normally would have taken lots of programming, uh, now we're able to do without any programming at all. And that's basically, I have built a script that allows us to update records using a SQL. What normally you can't do in NetSuite, and, and I'm sort of cheating, but the important thing is we can do it. We can issue uh, queries that update records without having to program. And so the idea is that you create a query that has certain columns, and those are the columns that tell it what record you want to affect. And then the other columns represent data that you want to set on those records. And you put that query into here and it just runs through it and one by one updates all the records. So I wanna show you a few queries, what they would look like and what they would do to give you a sample idea of, of what's possible here. So let's take the simplest case. You wanna to touch a bunch of records, right? Many of us know what that means. You know, when you touch a record, it'll cause all the user event scripts to run again. And we have various utilities and even mass updates. The beauty of course with SQL is you can attack the search from any direction. In here, basically if you have a query that returns a record type and an ID, that's the minimum. You pass this query into this script and it will touch every record because there are no other columns here except the record type and record ID. Now let's go to a slightly more complicated. You not only wanna to touch, you wanna to update columns. Right now I'm hard coding values. Look at this, I'm selecting customers and then I'm extracting the maximum, let's say sales order date and maximum invoice for each customer. And I'm naming the columns customer last and so query now in that script that would update this customer and it would set this field to this value and this field to this value. So you have record type and ID and every other column in the query represents the internal ID of a field. In this example, I'm going to copy a bunch of customers and use them to create new customers. And the way my script knows that that's what you're doing is there is no ID column, but there is a from ID. And that tells it you want to copy. You want to copy customer 75. So it'll create a new customer. And on that new customer, it'll set the first name to this and the last name to this. All right, let's go to the next example. In here, we are going to create brand new records. So we have a record type, but no ID and no from ID. And therefore it knows you are creating a brand new record. And when you do, you're going to set the first name to John, last name to Doe and email to this. Hector, for example, he schedules this MapReduce on a nightly basis with a query like this, because at one of our clients, he has to create a whole bunch of records that are missing every night of certain types. Then you can transform. You want to bill a bunch of sales orders that are ready to be billed. Here I'm selecting transactions that are type sales order, and they're in either status pending billing or partially fulfilled pending billing. Because I have an ID and uh, I recognize in a two type, it's gonna transform it from sales order to invoice. Now, you could also add other columns and say, for example, you could add a memo field that says done automatically by script. Any other columns that appear will be stamped onto the transformed records. Now, what I used to do is I used to test it here and when I was happy, I would copy this, go in here, paste it and run it. But now to make this even easier, here's a new checkbox. Oh, you boy. check and run query and this query will be sent to that script, which will execute it. And in the confirmation message, it'll give you a hyperlink directly to that script's execution log. And then finally, just one more, Marty, and then I'll let you yeah. share your concerns. <laughs> um, <laughs> finally, I have also done this so that you can do it at the line level on transactions. I'm doing a query, I want every order that has item 1158, whatever that item is. And I'm saying, give me the rate as the current rate times 1.10. This sales order, this item line, this is the item rate. I run this thing and it's gonna update all of the sales orders and increase the item's price by 10%. All right, Marty. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, 
okay, that's really awesome. Now, if you can't see the power of what's been unlocked, we need you to have a breakthrough <laughs> because we probably are very comfortable with, I'm going to download the data and do my CSV upload and yada, yada, yada. But the ability to actually first query for data, then learn how the syntax works, and then push data back in is unfounded in this platform. And we don't need any script. So what that means is you're not dependent, you're empowered. You're absolutely empowered. And of course, I'm a little nervous because updating a database can be dangerous. So I want to be judicious in our use of these tools, but I'm just saying I, I want to be careful because you're being unleashed with a lot of power. Yeah. So let, let me just say twice this week, Hector came to me and said, okay, I've got a project. I need you to write a script to do this. And as we talked through it, he realized he didn't need me. He could accomplish the update through this tool. So I'm you know, eliminating work for myself. But the whole point is he is empowered to do these kind of things. And if you're not a developer, you can as well. There are many use cases. Here, let me, let me just run this thing real fast just to show you this, since we're in our yeah. account. Yeah, we want to see it okay. run. All right. So now what we should see is confirmation that it is running it. So you click here and it takes you to the execution log. Okay, so here entering, 10 rows returned, and then you see it. This is, this is one of the rows that came back from the query, setting field item dot rate on line index zero to 1133. Oh, it's iterating through it right now, right? Popeye? Exactly. Not done. So th yeah, this thing is single threaded, so, mm -hmm. you know, but it's mm -hmm. going one by one. Mm -hmm. And so now if I come into the sales order, which was 1030 was the price and I reload. Okay, so here's 1133, we see what updated. When this thing is all done, click to type error and see were there any errors. Make sure to do that to feel comfortable that it in fact updated all the records you expected. Or and it'll you know the log makes clear that it update, that it create a new record, that it transform, and so on. So you see exactly what it did. Plus, you should be able to tell that just from these because different combinations of fields cause it to do different things. Thank you. It actually was very good to see the update. I think it brought it more, brought it more home for for me for sure.